And within normal limits, it doesn't alleviate it, but it keeps it down. Uh, I would pick an A for this. Okay. Professor Lester Grinspoon mener, at det vil gå med marijuana på samme måde som med penicillin. Penicillin blev fundet i 20'erne, men lægerne og medicinalindustrien var ret uinteresseret. Først 12 år senere skete der noget. In 1941, two investigators look at penicillin to take this, this uh, uh, down from the shelf, so to speak, and look at it. And they studied it in just six patients who had a variety of... Uh, of infectious disease caused by a couple of different mi microbes and found it to be remarkably effective. Now, you know, that is really anecdotal evidence, but it led to penicillin becoming known as a wonder drug of the 40s. Now, why was it a wonder drug? Uh, one, because it's remarkably non-toxic. People can take a lot of penicillin and not get into difficulty. Similarly with marijuana. It's remarkably non-toxic. There has never been, I could not find in my studies, a documented case of a death from marijuana. That's a remarkable statement. Secondly, uh, penicillin was, once it was produced on an economy of scale, very inexpensive. Marijuana, once it is freed of the prohibition tariff, will be remarkably inexpensive. I den seneste udgave af Grinspoons bog, Den forbudte medicin, oplistes der 35 sygdomme og symptomer, hvor marijuana synes at have en gavnlig effekt. Så også på det punkt kan marijuana sammenlignes med penicillin, der jo netop er karakteristisk ved at være virksom over for mange forskellige sygdomme. The fact is that when cannabis re regains the place it lost in the, in the US pharmacopoeia, a place it lost in 1941, it will be among the least toxic substances in that whole compendium, one of the least expensive medicines, and one of the most useful. havde man tidligere totalt afvist amerikanske ønsker om, at også Europa burde tilslutte sig forbuddet mod alkohol. Men med hash skulle det komme til at gå helt anderledes, ikke mindst på grund af Harry Anslinger. Over en span af 40 år, fra 1930 til 1970, uh, Anslinger havde sin hånd i ikke bare hvad der var på den side af men også på den internationale side. Og en and, and dominant force throughout uh, four decades. Harry Anslinger var altså ikke alene manden bag den amerikanske forbudslinje. Han blev også via Folkeforbundet og siden FN arkitekten bag det globale forbud mod hash. Anslingers arkiv viser, at også i de internationale organisationer argumenterede han for et forbud ved at bruge skrækhistorier om, at marijuana fører til vold og drab. This file uh, is labeled League of Nations Report on Marijuana, and uh, one that was most often repeated is uh, concerns the case of a uh, Victor Lakata, uh, who's described in this report as I read a 21-year-old boy in Florida uh, who killed his parents, two brothers and a sister, while under the influence of a marijuana dream, which he later described to law enforcement officials. He told rambling stories of being attacked in his bedroom by his uncle, a strange old woman, and two men and two women, whom he said hacked off his arms and otherwise mutilated him. Later in the dream, he saw real blood dripping from an axe. Uh, and these are the kinds of reports and stories that Anslinger referred to uh, either in his testimony or from the League of Nations. Um, Anslinger was correct in this, um, and the details were accurate in what he related. Uh, unlike some of the others, who the uh, details uh, seem to be either distorted or exaggerated, uh, Victor Lakata did smoke marijuana. Uh, he did use an axe to uh, to murder his his parents. Um, but what Anslinger uh, did not relate uh, is that just two days later, in the Tampa uh, Tribune, the newspaper um, indicated that Lakata was suffering from schizophrenia and. Um, Uh, there had been serious mental, emotional uh, problems, hereditary, running in the family. Uh, that was left out. 
Anslingers argumenter om at herske voldsfremkaldende genfinder man også i betænkningen til den første danske lovgivning, som berører hash, lov om euforiserende stoffer fra 1955. Her i hedder det. Hashishrusen giver en betydelig vildskab og benyttes af gangster i USA. Det er argumenter, som ingen eksperter i dag bakker op om. Men skrækkampagnen over for cannabis havde bundfældet sig. Og med Harry Anslinger på posten som næstformand i FN's narkotikakommission, var det i 1961 ikke svært i FN at få vedtaget den såkaldte enkeltkonvention om narkotika, som blandt andet indebærer et verdensomspændende forbud mod cannabis. I de følgende år tiltrådte de fleste lande FN-konventionen. Som i Danmarks tilfælde skete det ikke, fordi man havde problemer med narkotika, men for ikke at få problemet, og så i solidaritet med de lande, som åbenbart havde sådanne problemer. Men det var langt fra alle steder, man var lige begejstret for Anslingers forbud. Her i Indien har cannabis lovligt været brugt i århundreder. Og Indien var der også et af de lande, som i FN talte imod et forbud. Kompromiset blev, at Indien fik en overgangsperiode på 25 år, så forbuddet trådte altså først i kraft her i midten af 80'erne. Det var entirely legal before that, and there was very little record of problematic use of cannabis. You know, uh, nobody in society would consider cannabis as problematic. Uh, and there was hardly any excessive use of it. It was just used in the culture and tradition uh, as, as something that people live with. Luke Samson er leder af Sundhedsmyndighedernes narkotikaprogram i New Delhi. Han siger, at Indien blev presset og lokket af USA og FN til at gennemføre forbuddet, som har haft dramatiske konsekvenser. In the 1980s, when traditional cannabis users went to buy cannabis, They could not find cannabis anymore because it was illegal. Instead, they were offered an illegal substance, which was brown sugar, a crude form of heroin coming in from, you know, the northwest frontier provinces of Pakistan. And so many of the traditional cannabis users, uh, you know, converted to heroin, which was not their drug of choice. And so s- right now, we have as a consequence people who are using heroin which is way too expensive much more addictive